What's going on guys, Shane here. So today we have a very interesting, very unique Fight Tips video. As many of you know, Coach Kieran Fitzgibbons of CSA Gym is sort of my mentor in the combat sports world. Well, he introduced me to his self-defense coach, Tony Blauer. Tony just came to the gym, we had an awesome conversation. We talked about pre-fight jitters, we talked about self-defense and harnessing fear, and then he talked about the spear system, which is pretty much weaponizing the flinch. So I ask that you find the time to watch the video in its entirety. I know it's not gonna be the flashy moves or techniques that you guys are used to seeing, but it's gonna be stuff that will save your life, I promise. So without further ado, let's take a look at the interview. And so here I, here I am, Shane, in this amphitheater set up on a stage, and I go, hey, what is the number one fear in the world? And a bunch of people call out, public yeah. speaking, public uh, speaking, right? Yeah. And I go, like, what is like two, three? It was like fear of sharks, fear of the loss of a loved one, fear of losing your security. And so these are like university students. I said, nowhere on the list is rape, violence, sexual assault. Right, right. Right? I said, how many of you, if you had a choice right now, would rather come up on stage and make a speech, pick a subject, you come up here, or get dragged to a secondary crime scene down an alley and get raped. Right. And the room was freaking silent, yeah. like quiet. But that's, that's the, the reframe. And it's an interesting thing because you've got, um, I just, uh, uh, a mutual friend of ours, Kirian, mm -hmm. from CSA, uh, he invited me on The Ultimate Fighter this year to talk about mindset and uh, and so I went on there and there were you know his whole team and they were all like incredibly experienced like world champion fighters right yeah right so I, I went in there and I started talking and I said hey how many of you feel fear before your fight and only three guys put their hand up so train people and especially type A alpha males like maybe you and me we don't like to talk about fear yeah. because fear has this like effeminate unwarrior like connotation right and so uh, um, I looked at some of the guys who, and they edited it differently, so you can't, you can't see all this conversation because it was maybe a 20 minute talk and, and maybe three minutes right, right. became posted. Uh, it didn't even make the show. It just was, it was too much stuff going on. It didn't make it so it's, but they did release it as the deleted. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, I was the deleted fear management coach. <laughs> um, and so, uh, but it was, the interesting talk is reframing. So I work with, special operations, my main business is training first responders. So I have a very different perspective of what goes on in the street, but the biggest reframe, if I'm dealing with, with a special operator who is willing to jump out of an airplane at 20,000 feet and charge towards gunfire, I still have a talk, the same talk to them about fear, the neural circuitry, fear, fear management, and the initial body language is when I come in, I start a talk on fear as it relates to combat sports, martial arts, self-defense, is like, <laughs> like really, what are you gonna tell? But what we're getting into is understanding the, the uh, relationship between the psychology of fear versus the biology of fear. So the biology of fear is like auditory exclusion, tunnel vision, butterflies in your stomach, sweating, you're maybe, you know, a lot of people don't know, Mike Tyson used to puke before his fights, right? right? But when he comes storming down towards the ring, everyone was scared shitless, and you're like, holy, look at this guy, no socks, no shirt, like just black shorts, right? And they don't realize like maybe 15 minutes before the guy was puking in a bucket, that was his physiological right. response to the fear. But his psychological was intact, because he went out there and he destroyed people. And so you could have some people, and you've seen it around fighters, where they're like, yeah, man, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. And then when they get in the ring, that's not the guy that was warming up that you saw. Right. Now, and so what I've made a, a career of 
uh, as a consultant is helping people with performance psychology and the mindset of uh, 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 managing fear. Because on game day, you're not gonna be a different athlete. All that changes is your mindset. So in those 20 minutes that you talk to these guys, I mean, sum it up, what kind of stuff did you tell them? Is there any tricks that you can do, breathing patterns? It's, well, I mean, everyone should find like a breathing ritual. You know, there's combat breathing, like, you know, uh, and really a lot of it is just to prevent you from hyperventilating. So you wanna experiment with the three or four different types of, of breathing exercises. I do mine, mine is more here, where I'll get an adrenaline dump. So a lot of people think it's interesting because I've done all this research on brain-based training and fear management that, so I'll have people say, what's it like to have no fear? And I'm like, what are you talking <laughs> right, to, right? right? right. Because they, they, they see you do a, like a lecture on fear and I'll, I'll break stuff down, okay, you know, the amygdala does this, the limbic system does this, your reptilian brain wants to do this, your cognitive brain's doing this, there's this battle here, and what you get stuck into is the fear loop. And the fear loop is this, your relationship between uh, what your expectations are of the outcome, so uh, what you're visualizing, mm -hmm. what your belief systems are, what your neuro associations are, meaning how your brain links up a symbol. So if I look at a guy with cauliflower ears and a tap out shirt and I go, man, this guy, he must be a badass MMA guy and I'm already visualizing him suplexing me and ground and pounding me, I've already started to lose the fight right. before we've even moved. So we tell people, don't imbue your opponent with skills they haven't yet proven. Uh -huh. If the fight's gonna happen, you need to be there. Right. Fetal under your desk in an active shooter situation secures the fact that some douchebag is going to be able to shoot you in the head, right? You need to get into the fight. Um, <clears throat> so, so part of it is, is that don't imbue your opponent with skills they haven't yet proven. Here's a real quick, awesome tip, uh, and this might save a bunch of you uh, uh, thousands of dollars in therapy, right? So this is a slide that's in every one of our courses, and, and it's, a, like it's a paradigm break or changes. I mean, everyone who sees that goes, oh my God, that slide might've changed my life. And it's basically the psychology of intimidation. So if, have you ever been intimidated sparring? Absolutely. Absolutely, everyone, yeah. everyone is. Yeah. And so the, the, the phrase is this, the psychology of intimidation is when you're visualizing what your opponent can do to you instead of what you must do to your opponent. And so what's happened is like, we start moving and I'm like, and I'm watching, I'm watching Shane's field. I'm, I'm, now I'm thinking about, you know, like I saw you throwing those knees the other day uh, on that drill and now I'm visualizing your knees or I'm going, oh, when he does that spinning, you know, back fist, I'll just punch him in the head. But he, and I start thinking about you instead of me. Right. So if you're mountain biking, you can look at the path that's open or you can look at the rocks that could make you fall. Uh, and it changes your whole psychology. Yeah. It yeah. changes your psychology, get it? And yeah, absolutely, and I can relate to this on a personal level. We were just in Dublin, Ireland, and uh, was sparring with the, the owner of the gym, and he swept me a couple times, and he was getting pretty rough, and I remember thinking, man, this guy's got really good sweeps. Right. And, and next thing I know, I'm getting swept more and more because I'm so focused on that, right. not on getting into a better position myself. Right on. And so, that, so just, just so you know, like everybody, even at the highest level uh, pro fighters, make that mistake, that's the subtle thing. So, you know, as a, as a performance coach, you know, I've done stuff like Skype calls or phone calls with somebody just before a competition going, and they're going, hey, I'm just like, I'm, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that, and, and I'll just, like sometimes, and not like a hypnotist, it's not that, yeah, it's not yeah. mystical, it's, dude, you're focusing on fear. You're, and so we use two acronyms for fear, false evidence appearing real, okay. false expectations appearing real. So see those acronyms in your mind. False evidence is, uh, let's, let's turn this into street, okay? I see a guy in a bar walking around, he's like moving around, he's looking and he's coming over here and I'm looking at him and I could see his nose has been broken multiple times in a fight. He's got scars and scar tissue. Uh, his hands are cut up and scabbed and he's like, you can see he's walking around looking for a fight. And then he comes over and he like looks you up and down and you're like going, oh, fuck, can I swear on this show? <laughs> sure. Okay, and I'm like, you know, I don't know what YouTube would do with swearing. So, <laughs> so, uh, um, so I'm like, oh fuck, look at this guy. So what's happening here is, is you're looking at his scars. That's neuroassociation, how your brain links up a symbol. The scars are uh, uh, creating a evidence that your, your, the psychological system is trying to make sense of. And so what you do at an unconscious, super fast level is, this guy must be a badass street fighter. 
he, look look at the evidence. I mean, in this, right, what right. you're not doing is this guy's got no defense. Look at his face. That's what I was saying. And yeah. so, the, but that's the reframe. So, but the, so the good person. So you're, I can tell you're a good guy, right? Nice. So the so the the good Samaritan, the good person, who really, and I make this distinction with self defense, and it drives me crazy because there's like this. It's almost like the Cobra Kai in the old Karate Kid, where there's like there's the, the, the people that are they're mean people, and they're asocial or antisocial, yeah. and and they give us the bad rap. And then there's people that are just good Samaritans. Like you don't work out to steal lunch money. You work out because it's part of your physical culture. You have a passion and fascination for martial arts. Same with me. Yeah. It's good for our body. And God forbid, or whoever you believe in. We, you know, we need to protect ourselves for our family. We've got a skill set that we can draw upon, but we hope never right. to have to use it. Right. You don't walk around. I, I, and I talk about this online because I, I'm always talking about the categories. Category one, two, three, four. Category one are all martial arts. Category two, all combat sports. Category three is uh, reality-based self-defense. And then category four are systems that only look at real violent encounters. And there's very, very few. The unconscious bias says this, and, and people misinterpret this as me putting down on the martial arts, and I love all martial arts. I've been a martial arts, I'm, as of last week and the date of, of this filming, 57 years old. And so I started wrestling when I was seven, so I've been doing shit for 50 years, yeah. right? And I try to explain to people because they think that I hate martial artists and I'm trying to sell my system. With the spear system, we're only looking at this, and this is a huge reframe for people, is if I asked you, you're walking down the street with the wife and you see two guys come off a building, they put out their cigarette, you go, man, I got a good feeling, you don't know anything about pre-contact cues and dissonance and pre-contact indicators, but you just got a bad vibe because intuition is real. Mm -hmm. And and you, you know, you kind of shield the wife a sec and they come towards you, you're going to naturally blade and go, what's up guys? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be thinking about a shin kick or a jab or whatever, and that's the unconscious bias where maybe what you needed to do is feign fear and feign compliance because if, start to encroach me, and, but naturally move back a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when, when I'm gonna move into a stance and I want you to respond naturally to that. So I'm the attacker? You're the attacker, move okay. slowly towards me. And if I did this here like this, do you see how you stop there naturally and started to hover? Yeah. So if I slip into a stance, I'm trying to stay in frame here and be spontaneous about this. Right. But so if you were walking up to a guy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be the bad guy, okay. and I want you to like blade, like, and I'm going, hey man, what's up, man? What's right. Up? So I'm gonna stop right here and go, what's this guy? And I'm, now I'm what I'm trying to do is check what's going on. Does he have a weapon? Why did he blade? That was because I'm a fighter too. Right. I'm a predator fighter. But now if I know how to defend myself and I got my wife behind me and I understand a moral, ethical, legal foundation and now you're the bad guy that walks up to me and, you, and this is my fighting stance so you can start walking in and I'm going, what's up dude, what's going on? Yeah. Take it easy. My body language here, this is what we call the Trojan horse metaphor of a non-violent posture. Okay. So if my fighting stance looks like I don't know how to fight, right. what do I produce or amplify in the predator? My want to attack because there's no fear on my end? Well, there's a gap before that, not just the want to attack, but let's talk about the psychology of the attacker. So remember when you were walking towards me and I shifted into a stance, you paused right? because it's like magnets of the same polarity. Suddenly you've got this energetic yeah. right, counterbalance, yeah. right? So, so I, could, I could go up to you and if you blade into a stance, I'll go, whoa, right? And now we we measure range. Right. If I'm a headbutter, I want to get here. If I'm a striker, I want to get here. If I'm a kicker here, if I'm a grappler, I'm, I'm looking for that feed. And I'm intuitively, all fighters intuitively, and here's a good tip for you guys, the bad guy in the real fight unconsciously moves to the range of his preferred sucker punch. Sucker punch being a, uh, a metaphor for whatever he likes to do. Could be a kick. Could it be could a be a butt, kick. Right. So, so if I'm a headbutter, I'm not going to stand here and go, you want to fight unless I'm a giraffe, right? I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm right, not going right. to stay here. Right. But if, you know, if I'm a close sucker puncher, I might walk up to you and go, hey man, listen, here's the deal, right? And right. I'm doing it, boom! And, and the shot's coming from, you see how I made you look at my left hand? Right, right, so yeah. you never see this, this shot coming. I might do this and go, check this, and bang, and there's the shot. You don't even see me playing with the ring. That's the setup. Get yeah. my videotape, sign to the sucker punch. Okay. Jesse, we're sending that to Shane, okay, <laughs> awesome. as a gift. But this is, but like, this is like red pill, blue pill, right? right this right. is like, 
So a lot of it, when I say these are the categories, the unconscious bias of, you know, you love Taekwondo, you love Thai boxing. The unconscious bias is you're going to select out of that arsenal when you see something happening and you're going, oh shit. What fear does is it goes back into our memory vault and goes, what's the solution to this? So we do everything like our category four stuff says this, and this is different than anybody in the industry. We say the bad guy controls the fight. And nobody, like, people don't want to hear that. They go, no, 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 no. No, I'm taking the guy down and choking him out. Or no, I'm going to uh, parry the gun and punch him here three times. And right. I'm straight blasting him. No, I'm headbutting him. And what people don't realize is that they are unconsciously um, selecting a move that they practice, that they have a passion for, that they believe in, because everything works on a demo. Mm -hmm. And it's the unconscious bias. And my, my caution is careful what you practice. You might get really good at the wrong thing. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, like I love uh, uh, right around the corner from me, the, you know, Nelson Montero, uh, 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 legendary Jiu Jitsu Gracie, yeah. friend, you know, a friend of mine. Uh, I've, trained, I've trained with him at his school when I, you know, when I can, when I'm not traveling so much. Studio 540 near me, mm -hmm. great, like, great guys. Um, so I love that stuff, but I understand the danger of, you know, you jump out of your car and I jump out of my car and you go to throw a punch and, I'm, and I shoot under and I'm on the ground. And I'd never stop for a second to consider that maybe there were three other people in the car who opened the door and now they're kicking my face in while I'm you know, gotcha. choking the guy out. Yeah. And so you say, careful what you practice, you might get really good at the wrong thing because all I'm trying to do is make the world safer. That's, that's, that's yeah. all I'm trying to do. Yeah. So um, you're, not, you're not saying don't practice, don't train. You no. Say, you're just saying train for every scenario. Yeah, yeah. Well, and here's the interesting thing. Um, the fights have to start a certain way and they don't start with the physical. When you practice just the physical, I call this the Star Trek model. So if I say to you, do you know how to get out of a headlock? Yeah. Right. When you were taught how to get out of a headlock, where did that drill start? From the headlock position. Right. And so if you do your 10,000 reps of getting out of a headlock and you're really fucking good at it, you've had to do 10,001 reps of letting somebody put a headlock on you. Right. So if I say to you, um, like, like as a demo, so I'm here like this. He's got me in a headlock. Right. So from here, there are a few things that, that you would teach somebody. One is I would immediately secure the hand because the most fastest, most dangerous thing you can do is gouge my eyes or punch my face, right? So I'm here like this. I secure the hand. Now you're trying to pull your hand away. So I'm here like this. He, you might yank your hand out, pull it away. If it, now I will check it. So if you go to punch me, I'm going to jam that, right? While you're doing that, I might come up and gouge the eyes or palm the face or smack the nuts. I'll wait to see what the guy's going to do because my best counter might trigger your best counter. I got you. And just wanted to take this time to tell you about Tony's annual Spear System Self-Defense and Combatives Camp. It's gonna be in Las Vegas the weekend of July 8th. You can use the discount code FIGHTTIPS for 10% off and a free Caveman Combatives t-shirt. Claim your spot by clicking the link in the description below. And now, so this is, so we're waiting for, so remember, Confrontations happen in three stages. We call it three Ds, detect, diffuse, defend. Detect and avoid, mm -hmm. diffuse and de-escalate, and then defend. The Star Trek model self-defense is start in a headlock, start in a choke, start with a punch. So it's like, okay, throw a punch. No, throw your other hand. It was right, like, right, right. Yeah. no, your other right hand, right? And you know, we're, doing, we're doing stuff like that. So you ask me, should people practice that stuff? Yes, but what's the moral, ethical, legal thing to practice is how to avoid the confrontation. And then remember this, and this is the big, big, big takeaway is that if I practice, I go, oh, I really want to know what to do if a guy lapel grabs me or has one hand here and threatening me here or he's got a knife here. What you need to realize in the brain-based approach to personal safety is that through Pavlovian conditioning, you're allowing the threat to get this close without any dissonance, meaning a bad feeling, and not reacting to that or responding to it, and you're eliminating all pre-contact cue development. So for example, I want you to put me in a headlock, but don't move your arms. You can't move your arms at all. Put me in a headlock. <laughs> What's happening? You can't, right? right? Right. So now drop your hands. Like you're so uh, without moving your elbows, but you can move your forearms and your hands. Put me in a headlock. Right. <laughs> right. You right. can't. You right. can't. So you need to move your hands. You need to move your arms. You need to move your elbows. But I never see that for ten thousand reps when I go, "Hey, dude, let's practice defense against the headlock." And I do this, and I go. And actually, when you watch people do it, and this is the funniest thing, yeah. is I'll, I'll in, a, in a seminar I'll go, 
Okay, who knows defense gets headlock? Okay, you guys work together, and the guy will go like this. Okay, you'll be the attacker. <laughs> right? He actually puts his head here. Right, right. Right? Oh, you okay, you choked me, right? And then, right, and, right. And so now I'm doing this, so watch this. Put me in a headlock. So I'm going, whoa, what are you doing? Like put it on me. Put it on me fast. I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna hit you. I'm like, but get your arm around me. I'm like, dude, stop, put it on me, put it on me. <laughs> right. And I'm gonna show you the spear right now. So I'm here like this, I'm like, oh, put it on me, and you know, lock your hands. So all I'm doing right now, as tight as you can, and I'm like, shit, right? And all I'm doing here is, this is what we call deploying the airbag. Your cross extensor chain, so if I go boo and I do that, and you see how your hands wanted to come yeah, up, yeah. that's your physiology, your startle flinch, the hands coming up. So what we do is this, is, is we're looking at a nonviolent posture, and we've got nine of them, which, are, which is neat. So as a system, we've reverse engineered, and I tell people this, that I built a self-defense system based on decades of research, and, I, and I, I built a program that I wish somebody had taught me when I was 11 or 12 years old. Yeah. How to spot the bully, how to move away from the danger, because I don't, like I built this because I abhor violence, not because I enjoy it. I'm disgusted when I see violence. Agreed. Bully, douchebag, active killer, uh, 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 crazy people, yeah. it disgusts me. And so, the system that I built and the whole startle flinch conversion, the whole spear system, spontaneous protection, enabling accelerated response. The spontaneous protection is this. If you and I are talking and I'm going, look, man, I don't want any trouble, blah, 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 blah. And I want you to um, lock and load a sucker punch. Okay. So, so what I want you to do is really fast. Don't punch me in the face because I don't know what I'm, I'm okay. just going to show you a demo. So right away, I'd be checking this hand right here because like, if we were talking and a guy put his hand up here, right. like what's he doing? Right, 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 right. So let's say your hands are down because we're just talking. And this, and this is a great example. Like when you practice how to get out of a, uh, how to slip a punch and stuff like that, you'll always tap gloves and you'll be here. Right, right, right. And so what you're doing is you're allowing, and this is so important when you understand brain science, is your brain wants to predict the future. That's, that's just neuroanatomy. And it wants to guess. So if I do this, like, but I don't really want to shake your hand. That's just a Pavlovian gesture that makes you do this going, what? We're over, right. it's done, so, right? Yeah. And so if I do this, your brain goes, oh, he's gonna do that, right? Yeah. And so when I did this here and when I look over here, you don't see that because your brain is, and it's trying to guess what's gonna happen next, right? So, so if we don't build in what I call the stimulus before the stimulus, then we can't get to, if you've heard the expression, get to the left of the ambush, left of bang. Have you heard that expression? No. It's, a, it's a military metaphor for this is where I'm going to get headbutt, uppercutted, kneed in the face, grabbed, you know, all this shit, right? right? So this is, the, this is the metaphor of X. When they say get to the left of the ambush, what they mean is get as far away from as you can. How do you intercept it? But if all of my training allows me to get here or we start here and it's just this and you're doing this and you're, and you're pairing and what happens is your, your brain never develops D1, D2 patterns or skills. Right. Does that make sense? So yeah. we can't diffuse, we can't uh, 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 detect and avoid right. because all our training just starts right there. Okay. So um, the, the, the idea here, so if we're here, so I, I want you to, while we're talking, we're simulating, we're in an argument, you said, I'm gonna fucking sucker punch this guy. Okay. And so the, the movement, have it be that whatever, whatever that is, just don't hit me. Right, right. Because I don't have a mouth guard, I don't have a head gear on. But what I want to show you is like, so I'm trying to diffuse it. I'm the good Samaritan, you're the douchebag, and I'm going, dude, I understand that you're upset with me. I didn't know that was your parking spot, and you move when you're ready. The, and you know, just, you just need to calm down, buddy. But so, you know, it, it was my parking you know, spot. I, yeah, but I'm really ap apologizing. Sincerely, yeah, I'm no, apologizing. No, no, make sure you really oops. Right, so what happens here is when you started to move, what I trust is my startle flinch. And what I did was, like, my hands just came up and deflected. This here, the metaphor for spontaneous protection, so this is hardwired in everybody. It's non-gender, it's non-age, it's non-task specific. You can see in an ultrasound in an unborn baby, what's called the moral reflex, where certain stimuli, you'll see this, the hands come out. And doctors refer to this as, as uh, the cross extensor chain and it's disengaging from noxious stimuli, which is big fancy medical speak for to push away danger. And so what happens is this, when somebody goes through a car windshield, not wearing a seatbelt, there's always trauma on the hands. In every knife fight on a frontal attack, there's always trauma on the hands and the forearm. So when somebody's slashing at you or the windows, you know, you go, oh shit, you don't go through the windshield like this. 
oh, fuck, right? You're like, it's like your, your hands come up. But I want you to think about this at a physiological level. How fucking fast is physiology that in the moment that you hit another car or a tree or a wall that boom, boom, and you're out of the car, that your hands came up before your face hit the window. If you ask a paramedic, a firefighter about this, they'll go, oh my God, there's always trauma on hands. Always. Yeah. And um, we had, this is such a, an amazing story. I was teaching a seminar in Atlanta and I got a text message from one of the students that said, hey, I hit a massive rainstorm on the way there, hit some like water, car skidded, hit a tree, wrecked our rental car. And I uh, just want to let you know, I'm not injured, but I might be late. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, good. I'm glad you're safe. You know, da, da, da. I'm talking about this. So we talk about this organic airbag metaphor in every course yeah. that we say that, that uh, if, if I went, Jane, look out, you, your hands would do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. So now what we want to know is how do we convert that and weaponize the flinch? Right? So if I'm here to do that slow haymaker that you did, I went, shit. So my body moves away from the danger, my hand pushes out danger. I'm out here right now, instead of me going, oh fuck, and doing this and eating your left hook right, because you're right. throwing it like just fucking looping punches, from that punch, I go here and I go wham and I'm in here and I'm now using my forearm or my palm like a hockey player cross check right. because it's up in play. Yeah. So that I've already got, so right now you're potential energy, I'm potential energy. When you make me flinch, I'm kinetic energy. For me to exert the most amount of force on you, I need to inhale and get that kind of like, right? So when you're like in a deadlift, right? You go, and you lock up. So when I get scared, I go, right? right it's that yeah, same, yeah. and yeah. these are all physiological things. I don't, they're, my, my reptilian brain is doing this for me. Right, right. right? So I'm not going, oh fuck, uh, he's ambushing me really quickly. I should convert the flinch and, right, right? right? And so what we've done is created this classical conditioning and, and so the concept of slow punch comes in, I go, oh, boom, here. Now my Pavlovian conditioning, so now my cognitive brain embraces what my reptilian brain did. And then from here, I'm going slam, and there's a form in the face or a form in the throat or a shot to the chest. And you're thinking, oh, left hook. But if, watch how, how wide are we? You have plenty of space, like two more minutes. I'm gonna show you something super sick. You know what a split jerk is uh, in Olympic lifting? Yeah, yeah. So, so a split jerk in Olympic lifting is, is, is arguably or inarguably, I don't know which word is right, inarguably the, the strongest, most explosive lift. So people can lift the most amount of weight doing the split jerk. And so when they get up in the front rack, the movement is a down and then it's a boom. It's this split jerk motion where you get under the weight. Right. So I tell people the spear movement is the split jerk of self-defense. Why? It's a quarter extremity explosion. So I could, and we'll swing over and I'll hit the bag after, but I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna do if you saw me, if you had heard about me, right? So Kyrian says, hey, you're interested in self-defense, but at a, like a different level? Yeah. He said, hey, connect with Blauer, right? right? Yeah. So if you went, yeah, wow, Coach Kyrian, he's like inarguably one of the best in the world. He said, Blauer is his self-defense coach. And you saw me doing this, Would you like run up and go, hey, can I get your autograph and sign up for like a month? Or would you be going, texting Kiri and going, hey, I can't find his house. What the fuck, right? So check this out. I want you to just like stand squared off. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit you across the chest okay. like this. I'm going to go like this. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. You ready for it? I'm not going to speed up. I'm not going to slow down. It's going to be this. I need two steps in and you want to go as wide as you can. Yeah. Okay. Stay, stay engaged like right. your, your core and your ass. You don't want to, and like Shane's going, he didn't tell me about this. He didn't, he didn't pre-brief me before this, <laughs> this is live. Should I put a math piece so, in? No, 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 nothing. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tap you here. Okay. But, the, but the, the movement's gonna be this. But I want you to understand what, because what, the boxer, if I went like this and went boom and I fired a jab here, it would hit you and you'd like, oh fuck, but you'd be right here. Right. Watch what happens to you and I'm gonna do two, I'm gonna do one in the air and then one on you, okay. don't worry. It's gonna look like this, nonviolent posture, and then I'm gonna step in and just do that. Okay. Nonviolent posture. Yeah. That movement looks like a push there, but when you get hit with it, I mean, look how far it moves you. Yeah. So imagine, imagine this, your punch comes in at me and I go, fuck, but now there's fear and adrenaline because you're thinking left hook. Yeah. And so I always tell people, don't mistake the picture of a waterfall for the actual pressure and power of a waterfall. And now I go, wham, and I'm on you, right. like 
but the expression of power is a combination of physiology, physics, and fear. Huh, I like that. It's fucking insane, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so, and I'm gonna, I'll have you do it to me, so check this out. You're, uh, I want you to go, are, are you ambidextrous? Or you like to always do yeah. orthodox stance, okay? I try to be ambidextrous. Okay, good. So what I want you to do is, is your, let's go with your dominant side because it's actually uh, gonna, well, it doesn't matter. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your forearm against my sternum so this is your basic, so your basic cues, guys, when you're learning the spear system is, is if your hands are open, you're talking to God, your fingers are splayed. If I went to hit you and that hand came up, so think about you're in a closet getting something and a, and a box falls, you don't go, whoa, I can hit the <laughs> against that. It's like, like, what do you do, what do you do? Like your hands come up, yeah. they come up to push away, so it's outside 90, fingers splayed. So what we're gonna do here is this, uh, lower your center of gravity and just get, get, get in your like that front stance there yeah. like that. This is, the, this is the position here. So I want you to just think about this, is you're gonna recoil here, and then you're going to jab with your forearm. Okay. Just recoil here and jab with your forearm. So I want you to do that. Uh, so index with the pinky here, and I'm gonna just stand here and, and go ahead and do it. So what you did there, check that out. Do you feel, now if you punch me in, with, in, in, in the, in here like that, yeah. you're gonna come off me and it'll be like ding, so pu punch me here. I'm gonna go whatever, but you do this now, fingers splayed, yeah. and now now do the jab with the forearm, right? Right, right. And I'm getting, I'm 200 pounds. Yeah. Right. So the jab makes me go, ah, boom, and now we're in a fight yeah. where this moves me back. So beautiful setup for a fast exit, right? Or a front kick, or a shin kick, or an improvised weapon. Difference of a sting and a forceful. Well, because one, even though you might be stepping into the punch, really the energy is coming out of a small weapon to a small target. We're here now, the energy's coming out here, right? So it'd be like me taking a baseball bat and going ding and hitting you and going ow versus me going clank right, and right. nailing you. And that might not translate from a physics point of view, but what's happening here is when you're, when you're hitting like this or you're just stepping into it, you're actually really connecting, and this is why we call it the split jerk of self-defense. You're actually really connecting your foot from core to extremity. The only thing that I want you to change here is reset up again. Mm. So get on me. So you're indexing it here like this. Yeah. So this is one of the practice stages and there's like, guys, there's, we've got hours and hours of different drills to develop this. So we're jumping ahead some stuff, but I know that you got a foundation as an athlete that you can pick this up. Yeah. So watch, watch what we're gonna do here like this. So watch again carefully from here. So do the move again. So look where I am here, where I can pass and get around you. Why? Because you did the bow and arrow and the bow and arrow in a fight is like this, going, oh, you want to fight? Ho, ho, oh man, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch you, right? And what you did is you right. telegraphed that because you didn't trust the, f the physiology and the physics of it, because it's new. I mean, how, like how many reps of this have you done? Three, Three. yeah. <laughs> okay, so what we don't want to do, and here's the beautiful thing is this, so that it's safe and I don't get a broken tooth or whatever, I'm gonna be talking to you like this, either hand as fast as you can, put me in a headlock. And don't, and don't stop from the, like, so I'm gonna let the airbag deploy, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna hit you, so there's gonna be no like complex motor skill, you're not in any okay. risk at all, but just get the headlock on, and when I stop it, just stay there wherever it ends up. Okay. Okay, okay. so now we, we sh let's spin to show the group where we ended up. So check this out, I'm already what's called in contact with you, right, so I'm like, I don't have to go and, and fire a shot, I'm already in contact with you. So my movement from here is if you were like engaging me, is when I go whap and I nail you or pull you, I'm using the, the, this extensor chain and now you're reactive, you're using your flexor chain. So extensor versus flexor is like flexor is the pulling, right. extensor is the pushing. You know to um, pummel? Yeah. Pummel with me. Go ahead, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> dig it, dig it. Look, I'm, 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 how old am I? 57. <laughs> dig it, dig it as tight as you can, smack it in there, right? So what's <laughs> happening here is now pummeling's an exercise. I'm not making fun of pummeling. Right. But if I don't know what to do, and I'm like, oh shit, and we're here against the wall, and you jump into pummel, right. and I go, huh, and I just push away the danger, all I want people to understand is that this airbag energy, that you, get, you know what I mean by the yeah. organic airbag? Yeah. That airbag energy is built into everybody. My, seven, my, my daughter's 15 now, but when she was seven, we were doing a, a video for, uh, at a seminar, and she'd come, just, I was hanging out with her, and. I said, you'll stay on the side. And, and she kind of loosened up and people had remembered her. So they, hey, Olivia, hey, Olivia. She goes like this. She goes, she goes, um, dad, dad, 
I go, yeah, what's up? She goes, I want to be on video. I go, well, it's not your seminar, honey. Maybe we should hold it. Like, yeah. I got to do that. Like, what would you do? She goes, come here. So I like kneel down like this and kneel down, pretend, I'll pretend I'm her. And you're talking. And she goes, I go, what would you do? And she goes, whack. And she fucking spears me like across the throat. And I'm like, Ugh. I'm like, and, but you saw the power of this. It's like seven right, right. chops me across the trachea. Adam's apple. I've got the, you know, the gag reflex. Yeah, I'm going, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> careful, you could kill somebody with that. Don't confuse this with, I'm not saying that seven-year-olds can beat up adults. But if you make the mistake, like in a child abduction, to go, hey, kid, have you seen my dog? And, like, and that's like the setup, right? So this is what we talk about in pure self-defense is what's the story? What happens before what happens? So understand, do you know from a physics perspective, what's faster, action or reaction? I'm going to guess reaction. Okay. And that, so just so you know, that's wrong. Huh. But you know, I say that politely. Yeah. All, a, action is always faster than reaction because action happens first. Most people don't understand the physics and you got to Google it and stuff, but the reaction sounds faster because like, well, that's the reaction. Yeah. But it's, it's actions always faster than reaction. And in an ambush in the street, action's always the bad guy. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is have a system where we are in action, but you got to spell in action with a hyphen because inaction without a hyphen means you did nothing. Right, right. So when I practice how to get out of a headlock, right? And I'm going, okay, whatever the moves are, if I practice how to check the kick, how to do, what I'm doing is to get good at that, I'm letting you attack me. So I'm simultaneously practicing letting people attack me. And, and I'm, what I'm doing, my nervous system is going, don't worry about the pre-contact cues because you can't get good at this unless you let him do that. In the sport model, you have to do that because it's a consensual fight. The danger is when you take that to the street and you confuse the categories and you, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, and there's a, a, a couple of stories we posted about it where there were uh, two fighters in Brazil that recently uh, with a two by four, have you seen that one? Yeah, just, I did look that just, up. Just insane. But I look at that like these are badass fighters, but when you're fighting an asocial motherfucker who doesn't care about your background, people are very resilient. Right. And then if somebody picks up a two by four, a gun or a knife, that changes everything. You saw that the, um, there was the, uh, uh, the well-known Brazilian black belt uh, who got shot trying to disarm a guy on a bus in, in Brazil, uh, right? And so he, you know, he just went, well, I'm gonna be the good Samaritan and do that, but he didn't understand enough about that and just assumed his physical skills yeah. w were enough. And like, I wasn't there, so I'm not judging. I'm just saying, listen, Dealing with the category four confrontation is a whole different animal. And the only way to look at it is to look at it through a, an unbiased filter. And the only way to do that is to not say unconsciously, like, because you could, like, if you were clever, you'd say, but aren't you spear biased? Aren't you right, trying right. to always make the spear get in there? And I would say I have a conscious bias because of decades of research. Right. And dealing with, who do I deal with? Who are my real students? Right. My real students are, are law enforcement military. I know what works. I, I see pictures and video of the aftermath of fight that doesn't get put on CNN. You know, so well, that, well, that brings up a good point because with the spear system, and I know it goes a lot deeper than what we went over today, but it was just reaction, it was just defense. Right. Do you personally ever throw oh, yeah. the first punch? Yeah, yeah, and so we don't ever say throw the first punch. And here's a, here's a neat thing for legal, moral, and ethical. So our system is completely legal, moral, and ethical. Um, because we teach D1, D2, D3, detect and avoid, defuse and de-escalate, and if push comes to shove, be your own bodyguard, defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And so there's some language I wanna share with your audience and with you, and that's called anticipatory self-defense. Okay. Anticipatory self-defense sounds different than sucker punching. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so I'm, I might be in, in a situation where, let's say, you know, you're a real good boxer, um, and you're talking to the guy, so you're the douchebag on the street, yeah. and, and I'm you. And I go, hey man, wham, and I hit you with a body shot, which I know isn't going to, if you've got glass draw syndrome, right? Yeah. You heard of that? Yeah. Right? So imagine I go, boom, and I hit this guy, and he fucking dies. But it was over a parking spot. Guess what? All of this is gone, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Because we haven't factored in, there's three fights, folks. Fight one is the fight between you and you. Do I have the will, the courage, the tenacity to move towards this danger. Fight two is the actual fight between predator and prey. And fight three is legal, CNN, media, fake news, all that shit, yeah, yeah. right? So I could go, you know what, boom, and hit you. 
you fall down, you trip and hit your head there. And next thing you know, there's a video of me going, no, no, I didn't mean to kill him. Like, yeah. and you're like, right. And so w one of the things that I want to, you know, especially if, if, if we continue to train together yeah. is start this reframe of language here. We're practicing fighting yeah. the sport of fighting, the sweet science and all of that stuff, combat sports out there. It's self-defense. It's dealing with violent encounters. And the reframe is this. So we redefine, if you Google the definition for self-defense, every dictionary has something. Remember the three Ds? Mm -hmm. Every dictionary has something that starts after D3. It's always something referencing the physical act of protecting your body or your life, property or life. What, I guess it would be self-awareness. As, as far as... Before you get to the third day. Yeah, but you can't if nobody's teaching it. Yeah. If you go to a subject matter expert and it says, you know, teach your kids self-defense, and then it starts with how to get out of a headlock, right? You, and, but listen, nobody's malicious in the martial arts. I don't believe that for a moment. I don't think people know what they don't know. Right, right. right? You don't know what you don't know. I don't know what I don't know. What I've done is accidentally, back in 1987, discovered this drill doing an isolation drill that was like this sucker punch training where for almost two hours I got my face punched in by one of my students. Yeah. And at the end of it, like migraine, m mouse under each eye, swollen lips, bleeding from my mouth. I'm in my office, ice pack. There was no whiteboards, there was no smartphones in the 80s. I'm sitting there like on my desk, scribbling on my blotter, going like, d I don't even think there was hashtag WTF back then. So I, could, <laughs> I couldn't go, what the fuck? I was like going, I was like, what was that? But I knew I was onto something because every time I tried to do something from the wax on, wax on world, I was 50 50. So you, my student, Warren, was a really good boxer, and we were here like this. And what I did was I put him with boxing gloves on, I put a mouth guard on, and I said, Warren, you can hit me as fast and as hard as you want in the head or the body, but it's got to come out of a conversation that's real. And he's like, what? I said, like, so you're. You're the collector for a loan shark. You're a bum in the street. You're a drunk. Because gotcha. what we always did was tap gloves and then moved around and did some shit. Yeah. Or we did like physical scenarios. Right, right, but right. we never did holistic scenarios, huh. right? And so, you know, he's here like this where, where he encroaches me. He's got 16 ounce gloves on. I got a mouth guard on. We got the old VHS. I mean, you guys probably don't even remember this. <laughs> so in the, when were you born, what year? 90. 90. So this was 1987, oh, you, you prick. You weren't even born yet, okay? <laughs> um, and so, like, w we had back in the Google this shit, you'll see pictures of it, yeah. is like a VHS tape. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Okay? A VHS tape that would slide into the video. And it's big, right? It was that big. <laughs> and so I'm filming this shit. It's hysterical right now. And so, uh, um, but what would happen is, like, the first time he'd move up to me like this, yeah. You say you wanted to move? Yeah. So you wanting to move tells me that you're not comfortable from here. That, so incidentally, just like side spontaneous movement, go yeah. back to that. If, if as your, as let's say I'm your coach, right? I go, don't move from here. Because right now the Trojan horse metaphor, you guys remember the Trojan horse, right? The giant wooden horse right. with the, with the warriors inside. Right. The metaphor here, and I hope it's a fucking joke because those are some stupid ass people that like steal a wooden horse. Right? But the idea here is I look at you and this is the Trojan horse because when you put your foot down and wanted to move, so do that again as yeah. I move closer to you, I do this and I go, oh, and now I'm watching. Because now what you do is you just let me know that you know that I know. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. And but I don't want to stay in this position. Yeah, you so. do. Yeah, you do. And here's why. Because of the Trojan horse metaphor. If we're, you would want to, and this is the unconscious bias, innocent question, so watch how this plays out, hopefully in my favor um, and not physical yeah. but psychological is if I'm standing here and I go let's fight man let's fucking go I saw you on have you ever been challenged because of your shit <laughs> uh, no actually okay. but I'm sure it's coming yeah, yeah yeah but someone will go oh you're that guy come on motherfucker let's go yeah. the worst thing you could do is go dude come on seriously like these are just like YouTube videos but now your body language so body language is 60% of communication your tone is 30 and your words are 10 so if I go like this I go Shane, I'll fuck you up, man, if I fucking see you again, <laughs> right? If I'm moving backwards and my voice is cracking, right. you're like, but if I go like this and I go, what'd you say? And I'm doing this, 
right? Like that just changed your breathing. You held right. your breath there, right? right? For real right now. Yeah. Because you're going, and so this is the subtlety of stuff. So right there, um, Dan Millman, who wrote the book, The Way the Peaceful Warrior, great book. He said, if you face just one opponent and you doubt yourself, you're outnumbered. If you face just one opponent and you doubt yourself. So in that moment, had I thrown something where you went, wow, he's too close, I don't like this. Yeah. Like you'd have been hit there. Right? Yeah. I'd have been hit there. Sugar Ray Leonard would have been hit there. Anybody hit at that moment, because what you're doing, remember the psychology of intimidation? You're visualizing what I could do to you instead of what you must do to me. So the reframe here is this is how do I get comfortable here? Right? And so I need to have the connection is the airbag. The connection is the sucker punch. Because if you move take a step back, yeah. so if you step in and I go, Oh, that's the guy, take a step yeah. towards me and I do this, right, you stop right. there. So now your adrenaline starts to yeah. I intensify, now we've got a much tougher fight. If I do this here, and I go, what's up, man? And you're walking towards me, you're like, and a lot of people, so the unconscious bias, like the grappler, the Taekwondo guy, the boxer goes, yeah, but I would just hit him. I go, well, we have, we have a, a motto that's so important when you're doing scenario training, and it's, it goes like this, everything works once, it doesn't work twice. Once you know what we're doing, you can figure out how to backdoor, how to hack it. Right, right. But what we got to say is like, like, so bad guys only want property, body, or life. Remember, the big mistake that I think the conventional uh, um, market makes with respect to self-defense is they confuse martial arts with self-defense. Self-defense is the study of douchebaggery in the fucking street, mm -hmm. the predator who wants your property, your body, your life, and they don't attack like other martial artists. Yeah. And so they're not thinking Oh, this guy's open. I know what I'll do. Put your hand, like, re replicate this. Yeah. I know what I'll do is I'll check his hand here and I'll put my foot here and now I can hit him because now we can't, oh, right. and I'll, I'll do this and I'll check this here so we can't, <laughs> like, they're not doing that. The guy who sees you like that, if you hold this, but here's the difference, here's the, 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 the difference in the distinction. If you practiced, where's a focus pad? So, um, get all, get your weight on here, get really natural on that. Feel like you're, 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 you're leaning on, but not too much leaning on this here. Okay. And, now, and now what I want you to do from this position, while we're talking, I want you to gesture with your right hand. And then I just want you to like fucking uh, smack like palm. Okay. Okay. So this will be like my face here. Gotcha. And you're going to, and so you're going to go like this. You're going to go, man, I got no money. Right. 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 right? So, so, and, and you won't do that till, till I, I place that there. Okay. So I'm going to go here like, Aaron, do you, what are you fucking doing in my part of town? Fucking, you got to face. Just, you know, so now I'm, I'm gesturing, I'm looking at your hands, but you haven't moved. So right now, what I'm doing, this, so this is an understanding of the psychology of the threat. Yeah. I'm going, hey man, I fucking told you, right? But I don't see this as a weapon system. Why? Because who the fuck would stand like that right, right. in a dangerous <laughs> confrontation? Yeah. You, yeah. See how, like, you see how brilliant that is? Yeah. It's like, like this guy doesn't know anything about fighting. So what I've done is I've seduced the overconfidence and the power tripper. And that's really when you start to study this stuff. So now from this position, don't hit yet because i got to move out of the way. Look how look close I got. So this is this, and now from there, don't look at me, look at the glove, look at the glove here, and just come off that and smack that. Nice, so do it in an open hand this time, because okay. you did a hammer fist, Yeah. right? Do an open hand, smack through it, okay? Now turn your hip a little faster as you do it. There's three reps, yeah. so imagine I went, fuck you, man, and you went, boom! Yeah. Could that set up everything else in your fucking arsenal? But it only worked because you understood Trojan Horse Principle and Nonviolent Posture. Interesting, I love it. So, so I'm over here like this, you know, like in this stance here, check this out, come on this angle here. And, and so I'm over here like this, like James Dean having a cigarette without the cigarettes. I'm, I'm, I'm vaping, because I don't smoke, because it's healthier. <laughs> oh, fuck, right? <laughs> uh, young coach guy, so similar. So, <laughs> so Come a, a bit here just for the for the camera. So move back like a half a step. So I'm here like this, and 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 now it's that same situation. Yeah. You would move in. Everyone else would go. What's up, man? Yeah. I don't know you. Like and and now you let the bad guy know that you know. Now none of this works if you don't understand the psychology and strategy behind this. But check this out. If I'm here like this and I'm talking, you're gonna slowly move in. I go, yeah. man. I don't get any money. I don't. But but wow. There's the kick. And there's the follow-up. Right. If I wanted to front kick you inside the femoral nerve or the kneecap, what do I need to do with my kicking leg? It's chambered. It. Yeah, yeah. Right? I can't snap it. I gotta remember, I'm all about uh, doing right. something first. So if I say, get me in a headlock, but don't move your hands, you're like, right, you can't. Right. So don't I need to do this? Yeah. And where was I here? Ah. It's fucking, but you don't see it. 
it's loaded. So are, are you conscious, no matter where you're at, if you're at a bar drinking, you still are always in a position where you're balanced? So what you're asking me is if I walk around like on high alert fucking, yeah. right? No. So here's the thing is by, by, you know, by trusting the whole thing, right? So from here, while we're talking, put me in a headlock with that hand. So I'm going to, like, I'm, I'm trusting this startle flinch. Right. And so you go to, you go to close it. I push away danger, I'm out of it. My hands are outside 90, fingers splayed. No matter what you do here, I'm going boom, and you're gonna fly into a car, into a wall, and I'm gonna either run, or when you look up and you're regaining your balance, you're fucking eating shit. Yeah. So I threat discriminate at that moment, but I trust the airbag, and this is the metaphor for the car, is that, you know, you love Taekwondo and Taekwondo, so let's say that's a Ferrari, and this guy loves pure grappling, and that's a Hummer, and this guy, this guy, uh, he loves, I'm not gonna mention the name of the art, but he's a fucking smart car, right? Like it doesn't, <laughs> like, right. and, and so you, we're all judging, we're going smart car, Hummer, Prius, Ferrari, uh, uh, you know, pickup truck. If it's a modern car, what's, you know, what's gonna save you in the ambush is the airbag, not the car. So the airbag, so when I go out with the wife or the kids, I pick up danger way earlier than people because I'm situationally aware. And if I've got some guy that's making me nervous, I, what I start to do is immediately download closest weapon, closest target. What could he do? I'm not ready yet. So, right, so while I'm still trying to catch up to the scenario, like if I were, say like that, like you're, yeah. that's your face. So if you and I were talking, I'm going, oh, uppercut here, fucking right hand here. Yeah. And now my, my, like I'm checking like this, going, dude, come on. Because if you fire the right from here, as that starts to move, the airbag just gets, imagine, you know those, the blue Swiss balls? Yeah, yeah. In the, like, so imagine you can't see it, right? And it's here, and I can inflate it right away. Okay. Right? And I go, headbutt me. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Left hook, right hook, tackle. So what happens is this, if I'm here like this, and I'm going, no man, that's too close. You go to headbutt me, start to come in. There's, I don't care if I eat 20% of whatever you throw. I do care if I eat 100% of it. So on the wax on, wax off model, and I'm not making fun, that just means that if you throw a right hand, that I've got the margin for error is right here. It's a small weapon to a small target. If I slip it, and this happens, right? If I'm a better boxer and I slip it, yeah. but if I'm trying to do a rising block, and I'm, if I do it slow, if I'm too soon, so don't change the angle, if I'm too soon, I get slugged, and if I'm too late, I get slugged. So the, the margin for error when you're trying to intercept a complex motor skill with a complex motor skill has to be exact. If you parry too late or too early, right? I parry your jab too early, yeah. I get hit. I parry too late, I get hit. So if you check, every, everything is if it's too late, it's too late. Or if it's too early, it's too early. Yeah. The, the spear system deploys this metaphoric airbag and I'm covering this whole ground and my, my, my interception tool is everything from my hand to my forearm and maybe even tricep and arm because I'm doing this. So is it, because for straight punch is that, is it, is it here? So you're parrying and then going Yeah, so out? no, so that's a great question because a lot of people will, will email me and they'll go, hey, I was playing with a spear with my buddy who's a pretty good boxer and he lit my face up, yeah, yeah. right? You can't, you can't spar with this until you get to the next level. So I've had guys, uh, and I've worked with BJ Penny, or I favor Frank Mir, a bunch of like, yeah. who've, who've messed around with it, like, like against the ropes, you know, against the cage, pinning people. Mir um, actually used it to set up an uppercut against Noguera. Uh. So what we had him do is, so Noguera's a, Mir's a southpaw, right. and Noguera went in to double leg him, and Frank does this, so start to come in with the double leg. Frank does this, now check this out, get your arms around me, yeah. but feel this, pull me in. You feel it, the outside 90? Yeah. And he went like this. Boom. Oh. So do you even see that? Nah. So it's a move that we developed for MMA. So he's here like this. And this is what Frank is trying to do, is he's trying to, as he comes in, start to come in. Yeah. This is what Frank's trying to do, right. short hook, right? But what Noguera was doing was faking and then shooting. So that fake comes up. Here, when he comes in, we push away danger. You start to drive in. As I'm doing this, boom. And it stunned him, but it set up Noguera's first, knock, uh, first knockout. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was funny because I, I said, that, yeah. I said to Frank, I was at the fight. I said to Frank, I said, dude, amazing, yeah. We're, yeah. And I said it would have been so good if you had used the spear in the fight, just good for my business, right? <laughs> and he laughed. He goes, what? 
What do you mean? I did use it. I did the move. We were pra we actually practiced that in camp, huh. mm -hmm. right? I, like, so what I did, and it was interesting, is I used the same protocol of studying what the bad guy does in the street um, in his training camp the week before the event. We went in there, we looked at stuff, and I, and I had his uh, sparring partner replicate. So a lot of guys, they come in and they just spar because they're just doing like aerobic capacity, you know, timing, and they're working on timing, accuracy, stamina, endurance, stuff like that. Yeah. I went, and it was funny because um, uh, I got to spend some time with Sugar Ray Leonard in 1980. And you weren't even born yet. I was not. Right? Negative 10. Um, yeah. Your parents <laughs> weren't even dating yet. So, um, so, so I got to spend time with Leonard, and what's, what's interesting is all his sparring partners wore a white shirt with red letters on the back with the letters D U R A N. Duran. Yep. Alberto. And and each one of them was told, we didn't hire you to spar and hit the champ. We hired you to replicate Duran's movement. And we want like he's a orthodox, but yeah. but his bouncy, like, you know, whatever yeah, that yeah. so that Leonard could work on his on his timing and his movement. And so that was the first time I'd seen that really applied intelligently in boxing where it was like you know, that was like, that's a long time wow. ago, yeah. right? And so we've always, and, and, and we've always, and that was the, like the year that I was starting my scenario training. We were, you know, doing stuff, uh, uh, force on force training way before my high gear suit was developed. But I would always say, if I'm gonna practice self-defense, I'm not gonna get in a fight with you, Shane. So I need you to be a drunk in the street. I need you to be a rapist. I need you to be uh, uh, a corrupt, uh, a law enforcement official in a foreign country. Right. And so what we would look at is characters, because when I take your personal vested ego out of the self-defense equation, right. it can be there for sparring. If we're rolling, you want to tap me out more than I tap you out. Right, right. Right? If we're sparring, you want to, you know, I, I back in the day, I used to like getting hit. It would fire me up. Yeah. But I always liked, if I'm not really good at math, but I always liked plus one in my favor. Yeah. We, we could go toe to toe, but if I hit you with the last shot and you went, hey, that's enough for today, I'm going, yeah, good. I, yeah, it was good sparring. I'm going, yes. One. Like, right, because right, right. you're sparring, right? Like right. that little body shot sound and your buddy goes, mm. yeah. you're going, <laughs> that little pig squealing sound. We is, like is it hard to get into character, have you found? It's, well, it's weird for some people. That's an yeah. interesting question. So what we don't do is we don't do an off-Broadway play. Right, right. So it's not like it's not like okay. Remember your lines here, right? right. right? Remember the gives good lighting here. We'll put an accent. Like all, all it is is it would be like we'd say okay. It's a drunk outside a bar, and what he wants is some money for some booze. And when you try to say no, man, I got no money. I only got credit cards. He's gonna get mad, and then he's gonna throw one of the classic. We call them PIAs. PIA stands for Primary Initiation Attack. In order to like don't move. If you were gonna hit me in the street and we were at this range, just talk me through what you could do. Probably headbutt if my arms were folded up. Right, or... and you could unfold your arms, right? Right. Um, and if you weren't a martial artist, because remember, a lot of times, like, this is the unconscious bias. If you go, well, dude, you know, I could step back and front kick you, I could do a crescent elbow, kick, I could right. do an elbow, I could, yeah. what, what if you were Tony Jaw? Right, right. Right, like, holy shit, what if you were <laughs> Jet Li or, or right. Jackie Chan, right? And that's what I always say, is we, we've got to watch this, and I say this with the deepest respect to the martial arts world, is, is I, always, I always end my, uh, my live podcast with don't hate me, hate the bad guy. Yeah. Don't hate me, hate the bad guy. And what I mean by that is I'm just trying to make you safer. Yeah. Just, you're safer just from the conversation we had today. We didn't do any drills, you're safer. Because you think about stuff and you go, you know what? I don't think about situational awareness so as much as I should. I don't know enough. So you'll start to research it and that'll make you and your family safer. Yeah. So you asked me about getting into character. We would just say, okay, a drunk will do like a, like a John Wayne punch. A drunk will go, give me your fucking, he'll push you yeah. like that. But a drunk isn't going to single leg you. Right, right, right. Right? Now you could say, what about a drunk MMA fighter? Well, even still, right? Yeah, but yeah. Well, there's videotapes of, and there's very few. And so we want to, what we want to look at is, is, so another one of our mottos is, everything's possible, but not everything's probable. And so if you look at all the possibilities, you can go, yeah, 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 yeah. But the reality is this. Um, there are maybe a handful of YouTube, Google videos showing good technique in a real violent encounter. The, the rest of them are just what I call survival movement. Yeah. The management of fear and survival movement, scrambling for stuff. So what, what ends up happening is like, um, uh, 
it's, it's a fight goes to the ground and a guy arm bars or chokes the guy out and jiu-jitsu says, oh, look, you need to learn jiu-jitsu. And the reality was, is if there's more than one camera on the event, there's a good chance it's a douchebag fight. Meaning consensual, yeah. whose penis is bigger, I don't want to back down. Yeah. I don't look at those fights, and I say that respectfully to all you guys. Remember, so we say spears a bridge to your next move. In your case here, so for example, you do a slow haymaker, and I go, shit, boom, and I do that. If I know nothing but the spear, I go, wham, and I smash you back, and then I'm, then suddenly it's Nike Kung Fu, right? I'm, right. I'm out of here, yeah. right? Um, haymaker comes in again, I go, boom, and I push away the danger. If I'm, let's say from Scotland, or the UK, I'm going wham, I'm, head, I'm pulling you in, I'm headbutting yeah. you. Spear is a headbutt. Haymaker comes in again. Boom. Let's say I'm the grappler. And here, I'm shooting under, like I'm picking the guy up and dumping him. Right. You could, if I threw, so you're going you're gonna to be nonviolent posture. Right. I'm going to throw the punch just slowly, let the, feel like this airbag, like visualize the airbag going and then uh, inflating out. So slowly, boom, here. Now see how this went here? Yeah. Just have it come straight forward. Okay. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to split your, your focus into complex motor skill. So when I come in, I'm just, I'm really just moving uh, gotcha. where, where you are. So, okay. so from here, in, in fact, think center mass on me. So when I come in here, beautiful, right? And we just keep that outside 90. From here, as a, as a TIE fighter, how do you feel about a knee or a shin kick? That would probably be right? most so, natural. So imagine if you practice going, so we, we talk about the uh, primal, protective, and tactical movement. Primal is when your body just flinches. Right. Protective is when you pick up some danger, but you don't have time to explode, so your, your hands just come out. And tactical is when you go, this guy's going to punch me. Like it, maybe it's a guy that goes, what did you say, motherfucker? And he takes his drink and he puts it down here and he rolls his sleeve up and he blades. Right, right. And you're like, fuck, are you serious? Yeah. So if you, so if you, so we use videos, we have video tapes. All of our scenario based training is based on video. So we're not, we're not doing cartoon shit. Right. Right. right? So because the danger of that is somebody's ego goes, well, I would have done this. I go, well, we're going to replicate what actually happened in real life, not what you want to do because that's what you're good at. Right. Because I'm not fighting you, I'm right. fighting right. them. Right? Yeah. That's how we make ourselves safer. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so imagine if, if you, you know, so there's, a, there's a, a video we have of a guy rolling up his sleeve yeah. and then blading and then throwing a punch and dropping because this guy's here going, man, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. Right. And he doesn't pick up any of this shit. Right. So the tactile, you asked me like probably 20 minutes ago, do I have like the tactical and I talk about anticipatory self-defense. Right, right. So from, and just so you know, so from this position, this is arm to cross, but this is actually the spear. I've just, it's telescopic, right? So this motion, so this is our spear stance where, where what we're doing is we're intercepting the eye line with the go fuck yourself bad guy finger right. or the visually like the front side of a weapon. It's right up there. If you can't see me, you can't hit me. So if I hit a spear stance like this, you can see over it, you might just come over the top. But think about this, if, if, like, if you wanted to punch me and I went dude and I did this, you would, your punch would be so much more telegraphic because you would unconsciously uh, uh, calibrate, recalibrate to make the angle, that right. elliptical angle at the angle of a football. Right, right. right? Yeah. The beautiful thing about the, 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 the startle flinch concept is it activates on, so if I go like this, that's, see where I made you move? Right. So that's a real flinch. You would have been here. Had I really jumped on you, you wouldn't have had time to uppercut and do a combo. Right. Your hands would have gone here and then you would have remembered how do I get the finger splayed outside 90? That's where you would be the strongest position to be. And so that, so the, the, the science of this is, is if a stimulus is introduced too quickly, you will flinch, like you just did. I surprised right. you, and your, your hands came up here. Yeah. That's primal. Protective would have been if I kept coming in, see the hands wanted to yeah, go, yeah. and you'd have pushed away, going, get the fuck away from me. Then you remember, oh fuck, I'm Shane. Right, right, right. I got a YouTube channel, I know where to fight. Right, right. right? right. And now you go, but here, maybe you throw the punch, break your hand, and the fight goes on, yeah. as opposed to how do I hit the guy with something super, super safe. The other thing in terms of, of, you know, you can win a fight and then lose fight three and now you're getting sued for excessive force, uh, uh, negligence and a whole bunch of other things. The beautiful thing about, about this is that you, it, it, it gives you a buffer to threat discriminate. That's fancy words for how much danger am I really in, right? So if I hit you and I knock you back and the guy gets hit and he's like, fuck man, what the fuck, you yeah. know? 
you go, okay, it's paper tiger. Right, right, right. But if this guy suddenly goes and he smashes a bottle and now you're going whap and you're like you're nailing him and you're now you're going, this guy's gonna maybe kill me. Right. Right? And now this this has gotten really dangerous. Okay. It's the same metaphor as the car thing, right? The sudden ambush in the street is like the guy who blows a light and hits your car. And the only thing you don't have time at that point to go, oh, I'll get out of the car. You don't have time to turn. Right. It's an ambush. So that car accident is like a sucker shot. And what's going to save you there is something that's going to create a barrier between impact and how energy is going to transfer a steering wheel or part of the engine into your body and head. Right, right. And the only thing that's there is this. That's just pure physiology. So that's, that's really, and I, I talk about you're a human weapon system. Everybody knows how to fight. They just don't know they know how to fight because we've been domesticated. Right? Yeah. Um, and for, you've got a huge following of people who love combat sports. So the big thing on this is, and, and you know, maybe on a future video we'll, we'll show a bunch of drills, yeah. but, but, the, but the drill is how do I, how do I from, from this position here go wham, hit a guy here, and then from there, boom, nail the guy with, with stuff and, and drop. Like how do I use the spear to segue into my combat right. sports skill, and I always caveat that with, was that necessary? Because at the end of the day, if it's a real fight, right. force must parallel danger. And people don't teach self-defense like that, right? They just they teach they teach the moves, and then and then something happens, it doesn't work, and why? So why doesn't a lot of self-defense work? I mean, I, if I said this to you when we first started chatting, that the litmus test isn't what we believe; it's what we see, and what we see is CCTV. Right. When you watch real fights, we don't see real martial arts and real combat sports and real reality-based self-defense. We just see people fighting. There'd be more evidence. And remember, my community are professional hunters, people who move towards the danger, law enforcement, military. They trust us with this because they know like the bad guy controls the fight. They love that because it changes your strategy and it changes your, most importantly, your emotional posture. And, 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 uh, and I use the term emotional posture on purpose because how you think and how you feel influence how you move. And when you really think about it, the first place that you're attacked in a real fight is your emotional psychological system, not your physical system. Yeah. So I ask somebody, like I go, you know, who here has been sucker punched and hit and fight, punch people with hands, where's the first place you were hit? They go, oh, body, head. So I go, I go, think about this. No, it wasn't, yeah. right? Did you know you were gonna fight that guy? And the answer is always, yeah, you knew when, you know, we're walking down the street like this and it's like, boom, and we fucking turn and like going, what's your fucking problem? Right. You know, ah, oh, fuck, here we go. Yeah. And so that I got that shot in first. If I said, do you ever been sucker punched? You go, yeah, this guy, my guy bumped into the street and he fucking hit me in the face. But what, where were you hit first? Well, in the face. If I peel the onion with you, you go, no, as soon as I bumped into that guy, I knew right. he was asocial and this was escalating and I was like trying to be the good Samaritan and then the fucking fight happened. Does that make sense? Thank you very much. I had a guy at a seminar, this is such a classic story, at a seminar who said, um, he said to me, uh, hey, I, 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 I agree with everything you're saying, I'm not trying to be a contrarian, and I'm not trying to screw up the seminar, but I was once sucker punched, and I didn't know who the guy was, and he hit me in the back of the head, I didn't have any pre-contact cues, I'm just saying, I agree with your, what you're saying, but this happened to me once. Yeah. And I went, well, that would be the anomaly, and you can't, people ask me all the time, how do you, how do you practice defending against an ambush? And I go, you can't, it's an ambush. Right, That's right. why it's, it's called point. an ambush, yeah. right? Yeah. But what you can do is intercept a failed ambush because somebody telegraphs, they screw up. There's, there's a hiccup in their plan. And that's what you've got to be able to read. So I said to the guy, I looked at him, I said, I've never actually heard that. I know that it can happen, but I'm curious. Describe the scenario. He goes, it's just like this bar that I go to and this guy hit me in the back of the head. I said, you said it's a bar you go to, right? So you didn't know this guy. He says, not at all. And you'd never had a situation with him. And he pauses. And, the, and I go, where were you sitting when he hit you in the back of the head? Because I can tell you before you answer, it wasn't with your back to the wall. Right, right. And he goes, he goes, yeah. And I went, and so you didn't know this guy? He goes, no. I go, and you had never had words with him or confrontation. And he pauses and he goes, well, like a couple weeks earlier, we had like some words. I said, dude, you had two fucking weeks to prepare to right, block that, right? 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 But you went back to the same bar where you had a problem and sat with your back, like right. to the guy. And he had been spending two weeks going, when I see that guy again, I'm gonna punch him. Right, right, right. Right? Yeah. So a lot, that's really a, a true story, but that's the cartoony metaphor of 
no situational awareness, no verbal skills. You start here. Right. Action's faster than reaction. If the bad guy moves first, you're gonna get fucking hit. Yep. Awesome. Tony, thank you so much. Thank you, buddy. Guys, if you have any questions for Tony, we're gonna meet back up. Leave them in the comment section below and we'll elaborate on it. Thank you again. Uh, where can we find all of your information at? Uh, Blauer Spear, my last name, Blauer, B-L-A-U-E-R, Spear.com. Cool. Links will be in the description below. Until next time, I'm Shane and this is Tony Blauer. Thank, Thank you, man. You, sir. Good work. Self-defense for the underdogs. Once again, Tony's annual Spear System Self-Defense and Combatives Camp is being held in Las Vegas the weekend of July 8th. You can use the discount code FIGHTTIPS for 10% off and a free Caveman Combatives t-shirt. Link is in the description below to claim your ticket now.